Hi everyone. Our last lesson for this week is going to be on force of gravity. This is going to be a very stripped down lesson, but that's sort of the best we can uh, do during these quarantine times. The very first thing you're going to need to do for uh, this lesson is write down a definition for what the force of gravity is. Now, I was a little bit I didn't really know what to write because we could spend an entire class, if we were in the regular classroom, learning what force of gravity is. But uh, for now, write down this brief description and hopefully we'll be able to expand on this later. Uh, whenever you have an object, whenever you have a mass in space, and every mass is in space, you don't think of space as being outer space, but literally everywhere is outer space. Every single mass warps and bends space around it. And because of that bending of space around it, think of it as almost like making a hole in space that other objects will fall into. So whenever you have a mass that warps and bends space around it, other masses feel that warping of space and they begin to accelerate toward the mass that has warped space. Now for the formula for force of gravity, this is going to be very, very easy. <clears throat> Our normal formula for Newton's second law is F equals MA. The nice thing about gravity is, on Earth and on the surface of Earth, we know what the A value is, and you've already used it in questions earlier, 9.8 meters per second squared. So because the A value is always the same when you're calculating forces of gravity, it's actually been given its own variable in uh, science. So it is Newton's second law that we're going to be using, but we're going to modify it. And instead of writing it as F equals MA, we're going to change the A to a lowercase g. So it is the same formula. It's still Newton's second law, but specifically it's written with a lowercase g because that is one of the most important constants in science. So lowercase g, whenever you see it, it doesn't matter what science it is. A lowercase g means that it's acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the Earth. And our value is 9.8 meters per second squared. So just to break this formula down, we've got three things in this formula. We've got an F, an M, and a G. Capital F is force. And you know already that it's in units of newtons. M is mass. And again, be careful if you're in chemistry class because you're using mass in grams quite a bit. But the standard metric units for mass it always is kilograms. <clears throat> and lowercase g, it's acceleration. I can't fit this entire word in here, so I'm just going to write excel. It's acceleration due to gravity. So, and it's a normal acceleration. Just because it has a lowercase g instead of an a doesn't change the fact that it's still an acceleration and the units are still in meters per second squared. For now. We may change those to something else in a little bit. So let's do a very, very easy example and then let me show you where we're going with this with an example that's just slightly more difficult. <clears throat> the first example, we're just gonna do a standard calculation for force of gravity on an object. So this is a hockey puck. A standard regulation hockey puck has a known mass of 170 grams. And the question is, what would be the force of gravity on such a puck? So as always, you write down your formula. You write down a substitution line, but be careful because 170 grams is not standard metric units. It has to be in kilograms or else the calculation won't work. So. I'm not sure how each of you cal um, converts between grams and kilograms, but remember there are a thousand grams in a kilogram. So 170 grams is 0 0.170 kilograms. The value for G, this is an acceleration on Earth, 9.8 meters per second squared. So multiply those on a calculator and you will get the answer and that's literally all you have to do. The answer here comes out to 1.666, I'll write 1.7, just to round it to uh, one decimal, two decimal places, one, one place after the decimal. 
you will get questions that are that simple on the next quiz and uh, usually there's unit conversions because it's such an easy calculation there has to be maybe something else to show a little bit more thinking so you do often get masses in grams or other things uh, such as tons but uh, we may skip that just because we're trying to keep things as easy as possible while you're at home okay so every question would normally be that easy but Here's where we sort of combine what you have been doing in the last couple of uh, days with force of gravity now. Objects don't just have one force on them. They usually have more than one force and you have to work out an overall force. So here is a mass being lifted by a person and it says in the question, a person is using a 60 Newton applied force. This is actually a very important word and you just haven't hit it yet. But here we are for the first time, applied force. So they're using 60 Newtons of applied force to lift a five kilogram mass. So the question here is, if the mass starts from rest and gets lifted up for half a second, how far will it rise? There's quite a bit to do on this question, but it's all very, very easy. So see if you can follow along. First of all, Let's deal with this applied force. Applied forces are um, muscle power and engine power, internal engines that can supply force. In this case, you, your muscles. So a 60 Newton applied force means, I'm gonna draw it on here as a, uh, as a vector arrow. So there's a, an upward force of 60 Newtons. But what we wanna start doing now is you want to start labeling forces a little bit more specifically. So instead of just writing a capital F for a force, I want you to try and start using the lower right hand corner of capital F to identify what kind of force it is. In this case, an applied force. So I'm going to write a very small A there. That's just to remind you that this isn't necessarily the force at which it's going to rise. This is just the muscle power. So it's being applied upwards with muscle power of 60 Newtons. However, it's still a mass, it's still on Earth, and Earth is still attracting it. So there is still a force of gravity, and force of gravity is always down. Or at least right now in grade 11 with these questions, you can always think of gravity as being down toward the center of the Earth. So there's another force, and I want you to label this one with a, a small g in the lower corner, just to remind you that, okay, so there's, there's an applied force of 60 upwards, there's a gravitational force though, downwards, and we need to figure that out. Force of gravity is mg. So let's work this out. What is the force of gravity? It's a five kilogram mass. The g value on Earth, you, you never have to worry about reading in a question what it is. It's always 9.8 meters per second squared. So when you multiply five by 9.8, you get 49, no decimals. So here's a question where there's, there's a 60 Newton force upwards, but there's a 49 Newton force downwards. And now think about the work you did earlier in the week with uh, boxes that had more than one force on them. You have to work out the overall net force. So this box isn't actually rising with a force of 60 because there's a downward force of 49. So I'm gonna draw another force arrow on here. It's not actually on the mass, but I'm gonna draw this off to the side and this is gonna be the net force. <clears throat> so the actual net force in this question is not 60 and it's not 49, but it's the difference between the two. So subtract that on a calculator. The actual net force is 11 Newtons up. Well, I've actually drawn the arrow up. So this is what you're going to need to do on some questions that are a little bit more advanced. You won't necessarily just get a force that you use in the question. You'll have to include force of gravity and work out what the real net force would be. And that's why you should identify these forces with uh, letters in the lower right hand corners because you don't want to confuse them. So now that you have a net force of 11, now you can continue the rest of the question the way we have earlier in the, the unit. Now you can calculate acceleration because acceleration is always net force divided by mass. But sometimes you need to know what the net force is first and you need to work it out. So we have an 11 Newton net force here 
on a mass of five kilograms. Um, I want my decimals here, so I'm actually going to do this on a calculator. 11 divided by 5. So the actual acceleration upwards is 2.2 meters per second squared. And now that is a variable that you can include in a givens list to finish this question off. So now you can go back and forget all the force information. At this point, you don't actually need any of this. You don't need the net force. You don't need any, you don't need the diagram. You really only need this. You have now determined that the real acceleration is 2.2 meters per second squared. And now you can go back to the work from uh, weeks ago. A givens list. <clears throat> V1 is zero, it starts from rest. The acceleration you now know is 2.2 meters per second squared. And the question's asking how far will it rise? So what will be the distance that it goes up if this happens for 0 0.5 seconds? So there's no V2 mentioned in this question. And that allows you to look on your formula sheet and uh, pick the formula that has these variables in it. And when you look at the five acceleration formulas, you'll find this one, D equals V1T plus one half AT squared. So it's just a matter of substituting into this and doing your bed mass properly. Distance is going to be V1T and V1 is zero. So actually, I'll, I won't even show that, that's gonna be zero. Distance will be one half AT squared. A is 2.2 meters per second squared. And the time is half a second and time has to be squared so do that on a calculator do your order of operations correct and you will have a final answer to this question of 0 0.275 meters and the question doesn't ask to express that in any other way okay so there are six homework questions Questions one, two, and three are extremely easy. The questions are only gonna ask you to rearrange the formula and uh, do a very simple calculation. Uh, question four is a little bit like this example. Make sure that you can do questions one, two, three, and four. Questions five and six are just slightly, slightly more advanced. Actually, they're more like this question. I would say this question is more advanced because it goes through so many steps. See if you can do questions five and six. I can't skip all the questions that are slightly more advanced because otherwise you're, you're more doing a, a college level uh, physics course. And we need you to be able to go on to grade 12 physics. So I don't wanna skip all the questions and involve a little bit more thinking. So give questions five and six your best shot and I'll post solutions to everything.